During our previous chapters, we had a quick overview about life-free mobile strategies, and we talked about how to build mobile websites using either responsive design or mobile detection rules. Also, we covered how you can build a mobile application with either native or hybrid approach. In this video, we will talk about push notification and how to configure LifeRay to communicate with your native applications. Actually, having push notification within your platform is very helpful and provide a lot of benefit for you. So let's see those benefits. First, it increased the traffic to your application. Actually, push notification help retain users. Not only do they help increase interaction on the topic of the message, but they can help increase the returns you see from your app. Second, gets you insight on the customer behavior. Apps help you learn about what appeals to your customers. Push notification have an analytics tools to help you track messages, interaction time, devices, platform, and situation which created the most engagement from the side of your customers. Third, foster engagement. Your organization app is a direct line of connection with your customer. People avoid app that simply take a space on their phones. Each message from your application informs a customer to what is new and can drive them toward an action. Fourth and the last, it's easy to use and it's easy to manage as well. Push notifications are targeted, friendly, and relevant to users. Let's take a quick overview about LifeRay push notification architecture. As you can see here in this diagram, the mobile phone register into the GSM platform first to notify Google that this application wants to receive push notification. Then Google return a registration ID to be able to send a push notification to the device. Our push mobile SDK in the native application send this registration ID to LifeRay Instant to store it in a database. Then let's say someone decided to send a push notification to that device. LifeRay send a message to the GCM with the registration ID and the desired message. Fifth, Google send a push notification to the device with this message. In this slide, I just wrote the steps again in case you want to read them. Let's see how you can configure LifeRay push notification. We will repeat all of those steps during our demo. First, you will need to install LifeRay push notification from the marketplace. Next, our default GCM is Google Firebase. So you need first to configure the Firebase. To do that, you need to go to the console of the Firebase and create a new project. And after you create the project, you need to save the legacy server key and the sender ID. Then you will add the legacy server key into your LifeRay instance. To do that, go to your LifeRay instance and then go to the system settings under configuration, then click on the top tab for others and then search for Android push notification sender. And once you find this, you can open it and you can add the key there. Now it's time to configure your application. Add the dependencies for LifeRay push notification in the build.gradle file. You can do that the same as we did with LifeRay screens dependency in the previous videos. Your application needs to register with LifeRay push notification. To do that, you will need to use this code during starting of your application. 
Note that to register the application, you will need the sender ID that you got from the Firebase console at the beginning. Now it's time to configure your application to listen to the notification. To do that first, you will need to add permission so your application can connect to the internet. Also, you will need to add the wake lock permission. You will add these permissions inside the Android manifest.xml file of your application. You will need also to add a broadcast receiver into your manifest file. We will see the implementation of the broadcast receiver during the demo. Once the application runs, you can see the application is regist registered with LifeRay and ready to receive notification. You can send notification using SOAP or JSON Web Services, or you can use the push notification application to test your setup. Let's jump to the demo and see how we can do all of that. In this video, we will have a quick demo for how you can configure push notification with your application. So, as I mentioned during the presentation, the first step to start configuring push notification to work with your native app, you need to create a project in Firebase. So now I'm, I'm, I'm in the console of the firebase.google.com and I will create a new project. I will name my project DXP demo and click create project. Note that this process can take a couple of minutes. Once the pro your project was created, the next step you need to do, you go to your settings of that project. So you click on product, project settings. And here you can go to cloud messaging. And here you have all the information you need. So I'm going to copy the first one, which is the legacy server key. The next step, I need to add the legacy server key inside my LifeRay instant. So I'm going to my LifeRay instant and I'm logging here as an admin user. I will go to the control panel and under the control panel, I will go to the configuration, then system settings. And then I will click on the other tab and I will search for Android. And then once I have the Android, I need to add the legacy server key there. I can do the retiring time to be two or three. So I'm going to make it three right now. So that means that if there is no connection, LifeRay would try three time to connect to the GCM server to send a notification. Now I'm done the site from LifeRay instance. I need now to start configuring my native application to start using and listening to the push notifications. So in my Android Studio, I'm using one of the application that I created previously, which is LifeRay DXP demo, and I'll enable push notification on this application. So first, I need to add the dependency for the push notification. We did this before with the screen, so this is not something new for us.
right? And now I'm gonna sync my Gradle file. And wh while I'm doing sync, this is actually the end native Android application importing the library of Liferay Push. Now the sync is done, so I'm ready to do the next step. Just for this demo, I'm using some uh, Java classes and syntax that is relative to Java 8 and not Java 7. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to add inside my um, Gradle file uh, pushing my application to use Java 8 instead of Java 7. I'm going to sync again my Gradle file. Right, and now I'm ready for the next step. The next step, I need to create the server underscore context. And if you remember previously, we used to have this file so that I can connect my, my native application to Liferay Instant. I already have this file created, so I don't need to recreate it. Here I connect to my Liferay on my local host, and this is my uh, instant ID, and this is the, the site ID, and this is the version that I'm using. Next, I need to create the push receiver class. So this is going to be the broadcast receiver that I will use it and register inside the manifest. So with those class, I'm going to listen to the notification. And once I get any notification, I can actually handle it the way I want. In my use case, any not notification I will receive, I will show a pop-up window with this notification. Right. I will need to add this Java class inside it. The next, I need to create the push server service uh, class. This is also work with the broadcast receiver. We will discuss the code that I'm adding here in a second. So this is the broadcast receiver. This is the class that actually received the notification and handle it. So you can see here, anytime I receive a notification, the first thing is I add it inside my logs that I received a notification. And then I show what's inside this notification. The second thing I do is actually calling the main activity again. And inside the main activity, I pass a parameter that it's called my text. So in my code, what I'm going to do is anytime I'm going to render the main activity, I'm going to check if this my text exists. And if it exists, I'm going to show a pop up window with the text inside this value. So this is the class that listened to the notification. And I can actually handle this notification the way I want. And as you can see here, I'm showing a pop up window whenever I receive this notification. Next. I need to add permissions so my app can connect to the internet. So to do that, I need to do it inside my manifest class. Also, I need to register the broadcast receiver. To do this, I need to copy those files and add them under under the activity. Right. 
right? So now I'm going to start writing the code to register my users inside Liferay whenever the application starts. So I'm going to go to the main activity and I'm going to the Java of that main activity. The first thing I need to do is I need to pass the session of this application to the push notification. So anytime you try to register an application, it needs to be registered against a user. Here I'm actually just making a fake session and I'm going to add the username and password. But in real case scenario, you actually pass the username and password from your native application to your, um, to your uh, Liferay instance through different authentication methods. Right? Now I'm actually ready to start registering my user. Right? So I'm going to add this code inside the, cre the create method of this activity. So whenever I start my application, this is the code will be run whenever the create method. So let me explain a little bit this, uh, this code. So here, as you can see, the first thing I do is I check if um, whenever I run this activity, if inside my activity there is a variable called my text. If there is a variable called my text, I'm going to show the alert. That means that if there is a value inside my text, that means there is a push notification was received, and then the push notification need to be shown as a dialog message. If it was null, I don't need to show any dialog message here. So I'm going to implement the alert method um, now ac after I explain this code here. Next here, I need to do fix a couple of imports. So you can see here, this is how during the creation, I'm going to register my application with Liferay instant. So I'm passing the session that has the username and password. I'm defining what version I'm connected to. And now I'm saying if I log in successfully, print in the logs that this device was registered. If I failed, print that there is some errors. The last thing I need to do for the registration is to add the sender ID. The sender ID is what we got from um, uh, the Firebase at the beginning. Right. Next, I need to implement the alert method so it shows a pop up window whenever I receive a notification. All right. So let's just revise the flow again. Okay. So the first thing is if you receive a push notification, the first class that will receive this notification is this class. So this is the broadcast receiver. So the broadcast receiver, the first thing they will do, they actually will add an attack, will add in the logs that there is a notification received and will print this notification. The second thing they will do, they will actually run again the, the main activity. And they will add inside the main activity a variable called my text. And inside the my text, they will add the notification. From the activity, once I create the activity, 
I check if there is any values inside my text. That means that there is notification was received. And in this case, I show an alert and that alert will have the message inside this notification. Also during the create, I can register my application with, um, uh, with LifeRay Instant. And to do that, I use that code that I explained it previously. So now I'm done. Let's actually test this. So I'm going to run my application. Right, so here the first thing we want to check is if there is any problem, if we received, so you can see here there is the device was uh, registered successfully, right? So that means if I went back here to my life rate instance and I'm gonna go to my push notification, I can see under devices that this device got registered successfully with life ray. Next, I need to send a push notification from LifeRay to the device now. Right, so this is my push notification. I will send it right now. Okay, the ID is not configured properly, so we may need to reconfigure it again. So we're going to try it one more time. So you can see here, if I want to test my, my uh, push notification now, can see I can receive it here right away so I can change my message and you can see I receive it on the phone so with this way you can always configure push notification with your native application and be able to communicate from your life rate instant with your native application